Hello and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I want to look at two methods for deriving modes. The first method is pretty simple. You may have seen it before. It may have actually been the first method you're introduced to at school. Uh, but it's very straightforward and it is a good way of deriving all the modes of a particular major scale. So if we start off with the C major scale, we basically get this by playing all of the white keys on the piano from C to C. It's also, we can think about the interval pattern or between the notes in the major scale as being tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. If we then basically start the major scale on the second step, so start from D and play all of the white keys up to D, we end up with a different pattern here. Firstly, we have to move it on, so we basically start from the second step. So now we'd have tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone, tone. And this gives us the pattern for a Dorian mode, so this the second step is Dorian. If we do the same thing from E to E, again, just playing all of the white keys, we end up with the Phrygian mode, which I can never spell. If we do the same thing from F to F, we end up with a Lydian mode. If we do the same thing from G to G, we end up with a Mixolydian mode. Uh, a to A will give us an Aeolian mode or the natural minor scale. We'd be used to playing this. If you play all of the white keys on the piano, for example, it will give you the A natural minor scale or the A Aeolian mode. And then finally from B to B will give us the Locrian mode. So we can derive those modes pretty simply. We just take the major scale, start at a different step, and then we just have to remember the second step is Dorian, the third step is Phrygian, the fourth step is Lydian, and so forth. This works, it's a great system, it's very, very simple to understand. However, I don't think it's really very useful tonally for understanding what actually happens with the mode, so I'm gonna show you a different method. But before we do that, just to give you a little precursor to the next method, here's an example where I'm just gonna play the C major scale followed immediately by the E Phrygian mode. So in other words, playing C major starting in C and also playing C major, but this time starting in E. And I think you'll find that your ear essentially stays in the key of C major throughout. There is no idea of moving to this E Phrygian mode. Have a listen and see what you think, and then we'll look at the second example. So on to the second method. But just before we do, I have to precursor this just by saying, if you're asked the direct question, derive all of the modes of the C major scale, then the first method is going to give you the correct answer. This method won't actually give you that the answer to that question, but what it will give you is a different derivation of the modes, showing more about what's actually happening when we create the modes. And they give you a little bit more information in terms of making musical decisions about when you might choose to explore using a certain mode. So if we start off with the first scale here of C major, if we think about where we are on the cycle, we're here at the top. Uh, with no sharps or no flats in the key of C major. If we move around one step to the right, around the cycle of fifths, we'd end be, we typically think about ourselves being in the key of G major. But more importantly, consider that we have sharpened the F. So if we do the same thing here, and sharpen our F in this scale, we end up with what is called a Lydian mode. So a Lydian mode is just a major scale with a sharpened fourth step. All the other modes we're going to derive by traveling around the cycle of fourths. So firstly, let's make that first cycle of fourth step back to our C. We said it was C major. It also has a modal name, which is Ionian. So then if we travel one more step around the cycle of fourths, what's, what's actually going to happen when we get here is we're going to flatten the B. So let's do that to our scale. C, D, E, F, G, A, B flat, and C. And we end up with a Mixolydian mode. So Mixolydian mode is basically just a major scale with a flattened seventh step. If we do one more move around the cycle, we're going to flatten the E at this step. So let's do the same thing here. C, D, E flat, F, G, A, B flat, and C. And this gives us a Dorian mode. So a Dorian mode, the interesting thing about it is it's introduced this idea of minorness to the modes. We've now flattened the E flat. And because we're going to keep that E flat, this sort of minorness is going to continue. But we can see that the Dorian mode here, there's, there's a, a big tonal shift. Straight away, we've moved from being more major -y to minor. If we take another step around the cycle, we would be adding A flat at this step. And if we do that to our scale, C, D, E flat, F, G, A flat, B flat, and C, we end up with what is known as an Aeolian mode or the natural minor scale. 
If we make another step around the cycle of fourths, we'd be flattening D at this step. So let's do the same thing to the scale. C, D flat, E flat, F, G, A flat, B flat, and C. And this is known as the Phrygian mode. So the Phrygian mode introduces this idea of a flattened second step. And again, because we're going to carry this on to the next one, in fact, it's our last mode. So if we make one more step around, we end up flattening the G. We do the same thing to our scale. We end up with C, D flat, E flat, F, G flat, A flat, B flat, and C. And that gives us our Locrian mode. So the reason why I think this is kind of useful is it gives you a bit of a bit more musical insight into what's actually happening. And just as an example of one way you could start sort of categorizing your thinking a little way, we could think about these top three here being all sort of major in a way because they all contain a natural third. You know, the Mixolydian, the Iodian, the Lydian all have a major third step, so they all have a major -y type of sound. Whereas the next two, if we look at the Dorian and the Aeolian, for example, or the natural minor, that's these two here, we can kind of think of these as being kind of a flattened third step. And then the next two gives us this idea of a flattened second step. So there's one way you could just start thinking about the fact that, well, these are, these are more closely related and these are closely related and these three are closely related. Uh, I think it's just a little bit more uh, informative to start thinking about the modes that way because you're thinking about what's actually happening in them and texturally what's actually changing within the scale. Anyway, I hope that's been useful. As I say, first method, if you just want to derive all of the modes of a major scale, first method works fine and it's very simple to do. Of course, you can do it with any major scale. And this second method, as I say, just gives you a little bit more insight into what's actually happening between each modal step and, and why the modes sound different uh, looking at their characters. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And until the next video, enjoy your music.